Hey guys, check these out. What do you do with those? Oh, oh that's so cool! <laughs> so, your, your grandpa made this one when I was a little kid. And I just found this one in his house the other day. And I thought, I'm gonna take it apart and I'm gonna figure out how to make more of them. You think we should do a video on making more of these snake boxes? Yeah. Great. So here's a closer look at my dad's original surprise snake box. It's made of a quarter inch oak and the snake itself is a piece of coated electrical wire with a wooden head that he painted to make it more fun. What my dad told me was that figuring out the geometry to make it function was the hardest part. So I took his apart to see how it worked, then I set aside the complicated bit for later while I set about duplicating the box. Before we get too deep into this, I want to point out that in most of my projects, I make the prototype off camera so I can appear smarter, then I film myself making a nicer version. Today, we're switching that formula around so that you can see how I work through the prototyping stage. Rather than actually measuring anything, I just traced the original and made all my cuts from that. I'm using quarter inch cherry veneered MDF for the prototype because it's the perfect thickness and it's easy to work with. Cutting these little pieces at the table saw can be dicey, so it's important to keep the blade set as low as possible and use push sticks to keep your fingers away. To assemble the box, I used CA glue on the small pieces, then sprayed a little accelerator on the mating face so the glue would cure immediately and I could keep right on working. In fact, this entire project is held together with CA glue, even when I get to the final version, because it's just so strong and fast. If you've never used CA glue in your shop, you're missing out. It's worth keeping some around because after you use it once, you'll keep finding new ways to use it. There's a link in the description for Starbond CA glue, which is the stuff I use in my shop. And if you use the code GUNFLINT15, you can get 15% off your order. Trust me, that's a deal and you're going to thank me for it. Rather than trying to cut tiny little rabbits into the top slider like my dad did, I just faked it by using some 8th inch plywood to fit into the dados, then glued the top to that. The box needs to have one side that opens, just in case something inside needs to be fixed in the future. It would be pretty sad if the string broke or a knot came undone, and the box was 100% glued together. So I pre-drilled some holes and added a countersink, then used short screws to hold the sides together. One last little detail was to add a finger hold to the slider so the box could be opened and closed. Looking at the prototype side to side with Dad's original, I'd say we're on the right track. Now, back to that complicated bit I mentioned earlier. By this point, I decided to make my snake out of wood rather than wire, so I needed to translate that shape. I just roughly traced the original, then cut it out on my bandsaw. I'm expecting this to need some fine tuning, but it'll get me in the ballpark. I measured and marked the location for the pivot point, then drove in a small nail and clipped off the top so it would fit. The off-center hole in my snake made it so it wouldn't quite fit, but after redrilling, it dropped right in and only needed a little trimming at the head to get good clearance. I glued scraps as spacers to both sides of the pivot point so that the snake would sit more centered inside the box. This also makes it harder for the pull string to slip and get bound up around the axle. With some very ugly and frustrating twine attached for a test, it looks like our mechanism is going to work. I took a picture of my ugly snake as squarely as possible with a ruler in frame for built-in scale, then took the image into my computer for a quick graphic design montage. With that part out of the way, I fired up the laser. And as a side note, I feel like I need a better name than the laser. It's just too impersonal, it's too clinical. It should have a more friendly name like Mitch or Derek or Hal. What do you guys think? What should I name my laser? While I was still trying to pick through unused leftovers from naming our pets and children, the laser finished Snake Prototype 2.0. Once again, the pivot hole wasn't quite right, but after redrilling it in the center, we had good clearance and all snake systems were a go. The prototype was a success, so I started from the beginning to build a couple of these toys out of unnecessary walnut. I had a whole bunch of thin stock that was extra rough off the sawmill, and by the time I had it completely milled flat, I ended up with a bunch of quarter inch walnut boards. 
I started breaking these down into the components I needed, but before I cut the side panels to length, I decided to add a little extra touch of class using insert name here to engrave a fun design. I also let it batch out a pile of snake heads while I moved on to the next step. Moving forward, I tried to set up as many fixtures and jigs as I could to make batching out parts easier. A stop block on the crosscut sled made short work of all the side panels. Different start and stop lines on my router table fence made it so I could cut all the dados quickly, and it looks nicer than passing all the way through. I also simplified the pull tab by eliminating the little glued on tooth. Instead, I just routed a shallow groove in a board, then ripped thin strips from it. Once again, I used CA glue and accelerator to assemble the boxes. To make it easier to keep the parts lined up, I put a small block in my end vise, then butted the parts up against that as I set them into place. I set up stop blocks on my drill press fence to quickly add holes in the right position, then swapped bits to add the countersink. I love this mag switch fence by the way. Everything about it is magnetic, so it's really fast and easy to set up. I'll leave a link to it below as well, and if you use the code GUNFLINTDESIGNS, all one word, you can get 10% off everything on the Mag Tools website. You can see I added nicer little spacers to either side of the pivot point, then I tied a square knot around the base of the snake. I put a dab of glue in the pre-marked pivot location, then tapped in a nail before hitting it with accelerator. Then I clipped off the top and added the snake. The length of the string controls the timing of the snake. I found it was easiest if I pulled the snake all the way out until it kissed the slider, then I pushed the slider back until it touched the base of the snake. At this point, I wrapped the string around a screw and tightened it down, then snipped off the excess. I attached the back panel with brass screws because brass is classy, right? Then the snake in the box was ready to come out and play. All right guys, if you want to build one of these yourself, I've got plans available on my website. There's diagrams, there's sizing, everything that you need to put it together. There's even a template so that you can stick this piece to a board cut out the snake to the exact right size, and it, the geometry will work, it'll all still fit. You'll be good to go. Uh, if you'd like one of these, but you don't want to build one yourself, you're in luck because I got kind of carried away. Now, I've got to give away some of these as gifts, but there's going to end up being 25 or 30 of them listed on my website right now. So if you want a little bit of unnecessary walnut straight from the Gunflint Designs shop, go to my website and pick yourself up a Gunflint Designs Old Timey Snake Oil Snake in the Box. Now speaking of my website, you saw that laser earlier. I've been using that to try to come up with a couple of other products that I think people might like to buy. So you should head over to my website and see what else I've got there. Right now, it's mostly some cool artistic signs to hang on the wall. You know how any kitchen or dining room or living room that you walk into has one of those live, laugh, love, or family is surrounded by a heart sort of signs. Well, I took that style and put terrible uh, sarcastic things into them. I'm calling them sarcastic signs. So a couple of these are up on my website too. Uh, go check all of this stuff out, gunflintdesigns.com, if you'd like to pick up something like this for yourself. Now at this point, I should do the whole like and subscribe and comment song and dance. I don't like doing it, but I do feel compelled to do it this time because I have been told by a lot of people that they're shocked I'm not doing videos anymore. Well, I haven't done a ton, but I'm still doing videos and they're not getting notified. Somewhere in the algorithm, somewhere in the notification process, stuff is getting lost. So even if you are already a subscriber and already hooked up for the notification nonsense, whatever that is, and you're missing out on my stuff, make sure you go and ring the bell again because something got disconnected there and a lot of people aren't being told that I'm putting out stuff. So go to my store, pick up some cool stuff, make sure you're subscribed and notified to the channel. Uh, oh, one last little anecdote I wanted to point out. This is the third time now that I've done a project based on a project my dad did back when I was a kid. This one's the cool little snake in a box. I also did one on a booby trapped little desktop outhouse and piggy bank thing. And I also did one on a, uh, a sled. So I've got links to those down in the description too. If you like this little quick, simple style of project, there's a few more of them. You should go check those out. Also make sure it's not a sponsored video, but Starbond CA glue, game changer in the shop. If you're not using CA glue, you should get yourself some. Go to that link, use my code, get a discount. It's great. Same thing with MagSwitch. MagSwitch has some really cool stuff. You'll be glad you picked up some of them. Just go check it out. At least go look at it. Um, that's enough rambling. 
Thank you very much, guys. We'll see you next time. You'll, you'll see me next time. I don't see anybody. I see a camera. Hit the bloopers. Let's just start over, okay? You guys did a great job. We're gonna do it one more time. Just so the whole thing can get back on camera one more time. Can you pretend to be surprised? Mm -hmm. Just, yeah, just be excited. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, you ready? Yeah. What do you think of these? <laughs> Open it up. <laughs> so your grandpa made this one. Well, you broke it already. Well, that's not great.